Good afternoon, Dr. Gary here on the road. We are dental practices, dental practice sales, dental practice brokers nationwide. And uh, we have a pretty interesting topic today about evaluating a dental practice. Today's topic is evaluating and appraising a dental practice that had a very recent one year, 20% increase in collections. So the topic is how do you evaluate a practice that's had an isolated year, year increase? I think it'll be interesting. We'll talk about what happened. So as you know, we are now open uh, 363 days a year. You can call us from 7.30 a.m. till 9.30 p.m. We work every day except Christmas and Easter. Our number is 201-663-0935. 201-663-0935. Now, the... Um, excuse me, I'm in New Jersey traffic. This is beautiful. It's constantly 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's backed up crazy. That's what Fridays look like. So anyway, uh, we are available. Our, tune, our phone number is 201-663-0935. And our email or our website is uh, dentalpracticeguide, G-U-I-D-E, dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com. Just reach out and everything's there. I think we spent a lot of a fair amount of time on that. So check it out, read it and give me your opinion. Um, so, what you, uh, also with this, if you are uh, listening to this now, please remember this is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. In the event you want to, uh, you're a bigger practice and you're a seller and you want to sell to one of the large DSOs, please call us because we work with them all. Most of them all pay our commission. And uh, there won't be any out-of-pocket commission for you as a seller. So call us. They pay us our commission. And I get the same commission. doesn't matter who. Same commission all the time. So we're able to uh, navigate the field. And we work with a lot of the DSOs. Excuse me. It's really sunny here in New Jersey. Blue skies. This is a rare one. Uh, we work with them all. And they'll pay our commission, as I mentioned. But what we know is the inner workings of them, what they're like going to contract, what their um, their uh, letter of intent looks like, and how do they follow up with their contract, or what we call the APA, Asset Purchase Agreement. Does it at least mirror somewhat what you signed on the letter of intent? I just had a deal that it didn't mirror each other. The letter of intent was completely different than the... Uh, contract itself so you know you got to be careful with those things anyway so let's get in today's uh, meeting what we're talking about this is a case study this doctor <clears throat> has had a recent like with the last year or two uptake in collections that is collections are very high they went up 20 percent 25 percent in one year so now some banks are going to look at it and say well it was an anomaly we don't know if we can repeat that we know he did it in 22, but can he repeat it in 23? We don't know that. The buyer will be a little hesitant, but we have to still evaluate it, assuming we're at the end of the year of 22. I looked at it now, we kind of extrapolated out the numbers, but I mean, just think about it. You had a one year uptake and we evaluated the practice based on, the, on that one year. Well, of course, look at the other years, but it's gone up 25%. And I think it has value there. Now, this well, that 25% could be a marketing advertising, could be an outstanding staff member. Um, it could be some, uh, you know, special event that you held. All these people came. I don't know what it was. But the buyer is skeptical and the bank is skeptical. I mean, the best way to do it is you go the whole year and then the next year, you for three months, you continue it. Whatever you were doing before, you continue it if it's possible. But you want to keep up that continuity. Everybody's going to be looking uh, and scrutinizing you to make sure that the uh, continuity of care is there. So that that's a pretty big deal. And this circumstance, now again, this could be advertising, marketing. It could be a one-time event with some, maybe you had 
foreign exchange piece students or something over and you were treating anything could happen um, everybody wants to see will this continue on in 23 so you may want to continue with 20 new continue it on 23 for at least a few months and then you stimulate some interest so I think you can work out that way and that's what happened in this situation that we're going to do an evaluation we actually did two valuations one based on 21 one based on an extrapolated you know we're pretty far into 23 uh, now so a one year extrapolated uh, dollar amount all right but you still you know you still have your solid numbers you're still working so the numbers are believable but you want to just keep consistency the last thing you want to do is have declining revenues forget it the bank hates those the buyers start to panic it just doesn't work try to stay away from that if you can no declining revenues all right well i'm in standstill traffic welcome to new jersey i'm going crazy but i am going swimming after this in a giant 200 foot pole uh pool exciting all right bye